Hey guys, it's Stable here. Today we got a game in the Baltimore for you. Who's this guy? Bodger the Blacksmith. No, that's Einstein Halloween Commander. I think he's still available in the shop. Pretty good Cruiser Commander. Uh, Church verse. Great Cruiser Church verse. Great inspiration. Sleeping Giant Domination Mode game. And this game we're going to be talking a little bit about pace of play. Now, as much as anyone else, I like to get my hands dirty early. I like to get some high impact plays in early and played a little fast and loose. Sometimes you'd get in trouble doing that though. Uh, this game I think we're a little bit more under control in terms of the pacing, a little bit more aware in terms of what we need to do because you can see we got two destroyers. I think uh, we got the one on the east obviously and then the one in the middle. Uh, we do have a carrier over here as well but both destroyers going to sea. Okay now that's a frustrating play especially when you're on the far side of the map and you see your uh, main source of spotting leaving. And not even, only that but we want to be capturing B and A. Now, I don't want to put a Baltimore in the middle of B right off the beginning of the match. We're probably going to die very quickly there, but I'd like to have a destroyer uh, to support with the radar, with the quick-firing guns, with the high-damage guns, and the ability to utilize these islands effectively. But both destroyers going to see there's nothing we can do about that. So, we're keeping an eye on what the plane's doing. The plane is going over the middle here as we get in a little bit of a shoving match with the Belfast. I don't think he was zoomed out, or I don't know what he was doing. It kind of rammed us, and <laughs> rather than get pushed off out of my line, I pushed him off out of his line, so I'm fair trade there, I guess. Achikov here, he's going to be playing that island for the majority of the game. Go ahead and shoot over. Now, the Achikov versus the Baltimore. Achikov shots get to the Baltimore faster, but at a lower uh, arc at higher velocity, you know, uh, speeds, whatever, so... We can float our shots over the islands a little bit better than the Ochkov can, so that can be advantageous. At nearly max range, though, it's it can be pretty difficult to hit these targets if they do anything else. These high, floaty, kind of slow-moving shots. Yeah, we're not going to hit a lot of shots, so we're going to go take some... We'll fire at the Ochkov whenever we get a chance at them, but um, we'll see what we can do. Like I say here, though, there's nothing to really support from A or B. Keeping an eye on the map, uh, they got a lot of ships kind of hanging out in the top of the map in the north do have one cruiser that's going around the far side of fire the far side of a the western side pop the radar as soon as we saw b getting captured since we were spotted for a while hoping to catch him get some sort of a defensive play on him and kill one of the destroyers that'd be glorious of course oh, here he pops up here though he does cross over the line fantastic there's at least one destroyer in the middle they have three we only got two what's going on there um but nevertheless, we're going to take some shots at him. At it, AP loaded initially, shot, hit him pretty well. Uh, switch over to the HE. He's running. It doesn't look like he's shooting, so he's trying to get out of our visual range. Very hard to do with the lack of smoke for the French. So you got to be careful barreling in early. Uh, this isn't the Pablo where you got a bunch of smoke you can hide in. You get spotted early, especially with an aircraft carrier. Very tough to disengage. He does get off there, though. Uh, Belfast, quick cycling, Belfast 43 it is, quick cycling, uh, kind of lightning style smoke, so he's back in the smoke there, that's fine, I'm gonna go ahead and keep shooting at that Ochkov when we can, keeping an eye on the map, okay, we want B, we can't get B, we want A, probably could get A, not 100% sure though if the cruiser that's moving over there has support or not, so content to support the sides that we can shoot at from here, uh, until the play develops a little more. And that's what I was talking about earlier on. Like, it's kind of a slow start, especially, okay, we're three minutes in. We only have 8,000 damage. Not that impressive. 13 hits, whatever. A lot of them are just kind of glancing max range blows that aren't doing much damage. And, you know, it's as a player who likes to get a lot of impact uh, early, it's kind of like, well, doesn't seem like we're doing too great. But we are doing what we can do here. We're pressuring the middle. We're not directly pressuring A, but indirectly we're kind of pressuring that, but certainly B. And our team has the cap over there. They're in a big fight. Uh, so we're giving them time to do their thing, watching the play develop, watching the cruiser on the map there in the west kind of turn in towards A. I think the carrier, who seems to be taking notice of him, might dissuade him from capturing the base. But uh, I'm thinking to myself, you know, Achikov, he's got the torpedoes, yes, but close range. He should probably be more afraid of me than vice versa. So I'm now moving in, especially with the Amato, moving, you know, a little bit more behind the northern side of that A cap, the big island there. In other words, he has less access to us. Um, you can get a little bit more bold, maybe go for A. Now the cruiser sailed past A. That's a mistake. 
he also doesn't really know exactly, you know, maybe we're spotted intermittently here, but he's probably got an idea there's a couple ships. But he doesn't know for sure how heavily guarded A is, so I understand it from that perspective. But if you're going to go all the way to the west and basically do nothing for the first uh, several minutes, might as well go for the cap, right? Sailing past it, well, all right. It is what it is. He might have carrier on his mind or whatever, but he's got to get to the Belfast 43 first. Initially, I was thinking, okay, I should probably stick around and help that guy do a 2v1. But I'm like, you know, if he kills the Yachkov, great. If he doesn't, well, we'll have the cap by then, right? Because I've determined there's probably no threat on the western gap here when we move into A. What I don't want is some big booming battleship that I didn't know being there all of a sudden having a shot at us and blowing us out of the water. So if I can get the cap, hell, we'll trade the Belfast, especially if he's not going to shoot at the Yachkov. He's just hell-bent at torping him. Uh, then it is what it is. Shoot your guns, man. Uh, torp in between reloads. You're not going to do much damage against ships. Well, you got him with a torp there, it looks like, or maybe a vicious shot regardless. Uh, but you got him again. All right, well, the sh battle's going well. And looks like one or the other will come out on top. They're both kind of torping each other. I'd probably be focused a little bit more on the gunplay personally. But we're RNA here, and things are looking pretty good. All right, so now we got to be, as we're capturing this base, what's going on? We pop the radar, want to figure out what the Yamato's doing. Is he continuing to go around the west, attacking A from that direction, or does he go back towards the middle, which is what he does here. And now I'm thinking, okay, is he going to barrel into the middle of the map, get B, blast us out of the water, you know, point-blank range, start firing shots down to the southeast. Getting in the middle could be very difficult for our team to deal with. He's low on health, yeah, but I mean low on health for Yamato. He's still got 30, 40,000, whatever that is. And he can kill me in one or two shots. So it would be difficult for me if he really pushed in and the team wasn't paying attention. Looks like some guys are shooting at him here though and we're just taking our time because what the battleship is doing here, he's pinning us into this position, right? This is what we call a pin, at least in my terminology. Uh, but in order to move out of here, basically I'd have to sneak right around the edge and go directly south and then southwest as fast as I could and hope I can sneak past him. I can't move into B because they'll kill me that way. I can't move from the west and go to the north because they'll kill me that way. Again, I can go to the west and southwest, but there's no value there. I don't want to go to the southwest of the map. Uh, <laughs> makes no sense. Oh, the carrier found us, and he does get us with some torpedoes there. Now it's uh, Percival, I think, which has low damage torps and extremely dangerous AP bombs, especially if they hit the Citadel. So keeping that in mind, we got a, some plane shot down here. And I think for the rest of the match, uh, both initially by choice and then eventually by necessity, the carrier will basically be attacking me the entire time. And we're going to shoot down a lot of planes from this point in time. You've got to keep an eye on these cruisers. I don't have it spec for AA yet, at least not on slot four. I think we still got the reload which hampers the traverse a little bit because my, but because my commander build is so traverse heavy, I don't mind that trade. The reload is nice. If the carrier era ever truly begins and they're in basically every match, then I'll probably at that point spec most of my ships with AA in slot four. But until then, I just do it on a case by case basis. Thought we were going to get some damage on the Kansas. Someone else blasted them. Great job there. Yamato the still pinning us down here. We're spotted. He knows where I am. I don't know where he is. We should probably be popping the sonar here. I think we do that in a minute. But again, aside from kind of support fire on ships downrange, there's nothing we can really do until Belfast gets the Amato. Uh, looks like he probably suicide rushed him with some torps or whatever. Looks like he paid with it his life. But that opens up the play for us because we've been pinned in that position basically for the last three, four, or five minutes. And again, we're only 35,000 damage. Not that impressive. Now we did get a base solo getting some plane shot down. Sure, these are all sources of score, but I'm typically not going to show you, uh, you know, this isn't going to be that flashy of a game in terms of score. Uh, but, you know, once in a while it'll show more of a fundamentals type of a game or have a different type of topic we're focusing on. But this one, the score will be in, ended up being pretty good. And uh, this point in time, when we get torped again, you know, I'm starting to think, well, we could get B, that would be nice. But... You know, this carrier seems to be wanting to attack me the entire time. And I'm starting to get a little bit torqued off about it. We're still shooting at the Yamato spotter planes, too. How come the Yamato gets, like, 20 spotter planes in his pack there? I thought everyone else has one plane. Anyways, we're shooting at those. We're shooting at the uh, AP bombers that are coming away. And, you know, you want to keep bombing me. 
All right. I know where you are. He's hiding behind the island by the Ochkov. Uh, I think he's safe back there. Well, we're just going to charge for it. If he blasts me, hits me in the citadel a couple times, maybe I'll die on the way there. If Ochkov recognizes he's paying attention to what's going on here, uh, he wants to come over to the west side of this island and help the carrier defend itself, I think that would be a strong counter to what I'm attempting to do. But if they don't play it exactly right and the Ochkov still doing whatever he's doing on the other side, uh, he needs to be between the carrier and me when I come around the bend to have any chance to fend this off. So uh, he's not paying attention. He's shooting down whatever he's shooting at. And I'm recognizing the opportunities. So we've been spotted the whole time. I mean, I'm on their map. I'm on their screen. Carrier definitely starting to get a little bit uh, nervous. No doubt about it. You can see we shot down 26 of his planes. And the squads that are taking off are now looking a little thin. All right, so... Some of the carriers, you can kind of deplane them based on the regeneration rate, especially if you get like an anti-AA cruiser near the launch point, which we're going to be shooting these things down as, they, as soon as they take off, basically. Um, trying to dodge the torp here, but I'm also like, man, I don't want to be turning hard broadside because I'm expecting the Ochkov to be coming here to counter, right? That's the proper play. It's what he needs to do to survive. And I didn't want to be too fully committed to dodging the torp. So we'll take the relatively light damage torpedo hit and here's the parsable now we've already given him a whack or two earlier and it looks like someone else in our team probably hit him but now it's a little bit of payback time we got 10k there is that about a 45 degree angle from us so we can do plenty of damage tempting to fend us off tempting to stay alive just a little bit longer to keep influencing the match you can see the match is even in terms of ship score beginning to get a little out of control we got a we just got b they flipped our c sure but now we've been having plenty of uh scoring we had the one cap advantage for a while we had two for a while once i got a and now with the carrier down sure they still got a destroyer in the loose um but that's a good source of their spotting a good source of you know late strategic uh possibilities for that team so that's a pretty big play i want the Ochkov dead as well though the Ochkov passive this game sure but he still has a great influence over the center of the map and to a lesser extent the wings so he's been influencing the match i actually think he gets a pretty good score if i recall we'll find out in a minute here and it's going to be a close fight yes okay i'm angled steeply at him but he reloads quickly he's going to be hit me rapidly triple fire come on now easy uh every time we whack him okay he's at an angle we can pen and it's at an angle that we can actually rip that citadel to shreds uh, but he's trying to kill us before we kill him and vice versa. He gets me, I get him. Nice trade there. And now, basically, because we have the 2v1 cap and there's less than three minutes left, they can't catch on score, right? They can't catch us on score. They have to sink everyone. And the carrier and the battleship wisely, I would have rather the battleship stuck around and supported a little bit, but they're both wisely recognizing, okay, this game is won. And... Unlike, I think, the game that we showed yesterday in the Wichita where the team, the red team lost because they were trying to win harder. This team's trying to win smarter, right? Uh, they're staying alive. They recognize that they can't catch on score even if they magically flipped all the caps to red right now. They don't have enough time to generate enough points to get out of the hole that they dug earlier. Or the, rather, the hole that we dug for them by doing a better job playing the caps. So, good job by the blue team there. Overall, pretty good game. We'll probably... Trim it down there just a little bit. Uh, they do fend off the fight, uh, sink the battleship here, and then I think the destroyer just kind of runs for the rest of the game. So that'll do it for that one, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up new to the channel. Consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of War ships coming for you all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys, and see y'all later. Peace.